from my readings and from what these people have told me, Li Hang Ji just took all the little exercises, Tai Chi exercises and the breathing, and use those as sort of a front piece mm -hmm. to lure people in. Right. And then he takes them down the garden path, as we put it, to believing everything he tells them and that they cannot differ from it. When it comes down to Falun Dafa, otherwise known as Falun Gong, there are many reasons to question their belief. Some of these claims are widely accepted, others are merely accepted in China. Some are conspiracy theories, some are ridiculous claims, and others are more founded on evidence. Several individuals have set themselves on fire as an act of protest in China in the past. Two victims who set themselves on fire before Chinese police, they suffered massive injury, and the claim is that they did so out of an act of political protest against the oppression of the members of Falun Gong in China. People have claimed in some cases that this is because Falun Gong is a dangerous cult. In actuality, it's very similar to the actions carried out by people who set themselves on fire during the Vietnam War and other conflicts. People who are very often Buddhists who would set themselves on fire as a final and absolute act of defiance and protest. However, would a person of sound mind and rational belief do this as an act of protest if they thought they weren't going to some kind of heaven? When it comes down to Buddhists, would they do it if they thought they were simply going to die, going to go into obliteration? It's unlikely. And considering Falun Gong takes a lot of its ideas from Buddhism and other relating practices, would they do it if they didn't believe in some kind of after existence, some kind of afterlife or future life. Many people have claimed that the Chinese government is playing this as the idea that Falun Gong is a highly dangerous cult. China has oppressed the people of Falun Gong in the past, mostly due to the political aspirations of its founder leader, Master Li. It's easy enough to argue that, oh look at what they're doing, they're a suicide cult, but that's not actually the case. Most people aren't like that. Most people don't do that. And it wasn't incited by the organisation to actually carry out this suicidal action or nearly suicidal action. The survivors have come out and done a press conference since. But is this due to manipulation from the Chinese government? A conspiracy theory from the members of Falun Gong spread by the inner circle of the organisation that it was a complete fabrication by the Chinese government that these people were in fact employed, were set up, used as agents by the Chinese Communist Party. They didn't need any good propaganda against Falun Gong in that regard. In China, they don't need to have reasonable laws. They can simply pull any claim out of their ass. So in that regard, the Tibetans have suffered far, far more than, than Falun Gong members. There's a lot of pseudo-medicine in Falun Gong, Falun Dafa. The problem is, when you rely on the idea of your spirit being able to cure you, traditional medicine being able to cure you of your problems, and you don't need modern medication, you will suffer. You cannot cure that cancer through mind over matter. You cannot cure any number of different conditions by merely believing that you can cure it. As a result, over the years, thousands of people have died due to this kind of ridiculous practice. Very often people will go and see a doctor and go and get medication if they live in the West. But people who don't know any better and have been indoctrinated to such a high degree in China, as well as in some other places in the world, will suffer. And there have been some deaths in the Western world where individuals have believed they can cure themselves, but in actuality they can't. They believe that medication is unnecessary because they can operate a form of spiritual healing upon themselves and upon their illnesses. And the illness comes about through misalignment of their energy. That Li Hanji tells his followers to stop taking medicine. And some of these family members have said that their brother or sister 
has some very chronic disease like diabetes where he should be taking his insulin or other diseases where they should be taking their medicine. And they're very afraid that their relative will just get sick and die because they've read and you know they get on the internet and see how many people have died in China that have been followers of Li Hangzhi. Much as with a great many organizations out there, most notably televangelists, who collect huge amounts of money in tithes from their supporters and make millions every year, there is a similar sort of donation system that operates with Falun Gong, going towards the leader and the perpetuation of the organization. A great many people who support the organization will give a percentage of their income to the organization perpetuating the belief because they have devout faith. I see no difference between this and the actions of individuals like Peter Popoff and others who spread their version of nonsense by similar means, by indoctrination, by spiritual belief, claims of healing and energy, and the idea that they have a prophet, or in this case an enlightened person, as the leader. This kind of gathering of funds ensures that the person who runs the group and the individuals around him has considerable wealth, considerable influence, and although the books can be found for free online, it doesn't mean that they're not making any money at all. It does mean, however, a lot of the money is going towards the perpetuation of the belief, whereas with a great many televangelists, such as Peter Popoff, Benny Hinn and others, the money's going towards them buying a new Porsche. I'm always very sceptical when I hear of an enlightened leader. A person who claims to be enlightened, claims to be touched by God, a higher source, greater knowledge, perfect knowledge, or whatever the case may be. I've spoken to a great many people who claim to have these abilities, claim to have this existence, and I've read upon this topic to a great degree. You'll find people who claim to be prophets, claim to be gurus or the second coming, or the new Buddha, or the Buddha Maitreya. You have people like L. Ron Hubbard who claim to be a reincarnation of many of the most famous, influential philosophical beings throughout human history. And when it comes down to Falun Gong, you have Master Li, who basically claims to be enlightened and have lots of higher knowledge, to be in some ways a living Buddha. Now when a person claims to be enlightened, I've got to question, how do they know they're enlightened? How can we be sure that they have some kind of enlightenment? And the term enlightenment varies according to different beliefs. Some beliefs don't use the term enlightenment, they'll use another idea of ultimate knowledge, ultimate truth, or an important lesson they bring to the world. In effect, the idea of calling yourself an enlightened person or claiming to have ultimate knowledge is an excellent way of manipulating those people in the organization, those people around you, those people below you. How could you be wrong about anything if you have absolute truth? Therefore, anything which conflicts with your view must be absolutely false. In group think ensures that you think as the group thinks, you accept as the ultimate truth claims, and any ideas outside of the group are basically dismissed because they do not fit with your foundation for understanding reality. And what the parents and brothers and sisters of the Falun Gong members are concerned about is first, they're saying it's so against thousands of years of Chinese tradition to drop your family, to just dump your family. And once they get with Falun Gong, they're gone. The mm. young adult or person of any age just abandons the family because the Falun Gong people replace their real family. With a great many religious beliefs, pseudoscience claims are very common, where a person will make a claim about the nature of the universe, and because it's a claim which can actually be tested, it is in effect a scientific claim. They might even say something that science claims and try and make out it supports their belief. The claim could be completely fabricated or completely taken out of context. There are many of these that relate to Falun Gong, otherwise known as Falun Dafa. Some of the claims made by the founder and leader include the idea of giant space women, of flower-skinned people, but also claims that aren't exactly, well, reasonable, such as 
different ethnicities should not interbreed. Genetic purity, the idea that homosexuality isn't natural, and many of the claims you'd expect from a somewhat conservative kind of political ideology, coupled with a bizarre religious belief. Many of the other claims made by the organisation, by the movement itself, are not scientifically demonstrable nor refutable. There are many conspiracy theories, including critics online must be working for the Chinese government or must be deluded by fake evidence. Even though, time and time again, I've shown where secular sources, reasonable sources, not based in China, very often based in the United States, point out highly supported points when it comes down to some of the indoctrination practices of Falun Dafa, otherwise known as Falun Gong. There are some reasonable conspiracy theories when it comes down to the Chinese Communist government, who want to make them look as bad as possible in some ways. But of course, there are some reasons why they're not a good organisation, or to be more precise, why certain aspects of it not least the leadership and some of the most bizarre beliefs, are not helpful and can even be harmful to human life, as I've previously mentioned. But going from that and then calling critics a supporter of the Chinese Communist Party, calling even anti-communists that, and then accepting the most ridiculous conspiracy theories from people who are anti-communist, who are willing to humour members of Falun Dafa and Master Li's conspiracy theories, to accept them on very poor evidence, simply because it supports your point of view, is highly irrational. So you will have people bringing forward conspiracy theories about the Chinese Communist Party and their activities around the world or trying to blacken certain people on the internet and in the real world. But a lot of this isn't supported. There's a lot of conjecture. And if we are to be truly free thinkers, we need to rely on evidence not merely stories. These family members say, our brother, our sister doesn't talk with us anymore. He lectures at us. He has canned, rehearsed, memorized speeches of Li Hongxi that he just recites at us. If we visit him or if we call him on the phone, he just recites. and. They say, we can't communicate with our family member. He just lectures at us. I think it's worth pointing out that Master Lee basically has a load of really unsupported claims that he makes about the nature of reality, that he makes about the nature of the spirit, about the soul, about energy, about meditation, that he claims there's giant space for women, there's flower-skinned people, and so many more claims that it makes the entire idea ridiculous. But of course you find this with New Age all the time, with Indian gurus, with a great many other people out there who make ridiculous claims because apparently they're a wise individual, a spiritually aware or even somewhat enlightened individual. So they make ridiculous claims about the nature of the universe without actually even looking at the actual facts. They don't provide any solid evidence. And that's the real problem, the lack of evidence. If they provided solid evidence for their claims, if they could, that would be quite interesting. But instead, they simply have ideas, and they have ideas of practices. And if you follow the practices and you believe in it, you get the right kind of results because you follow the kind of practices and you have belief in it. It becomes simply a question of religion, just like with any number of different beliefs. So there's an idea with the energy that you have going through your body that if it's in alignment, that you're basically going to have good health. If you're channeling the energy correctly, you're going to have good health. It's a kind of chi idea. So people practice a kind of Tai Chi and they get the energy flowing through their body or so they believe. And it's a psychological manipulation in the end. The idea that it must be there. Can you feel it? You make yourself kind of sense it. But really it's the circulation in the body and the release of certain chemicals in the body because you believe in it. You make it more real because of that process. And so some people believe they're actually allowing themselves to heal when they have problems or preventing illness by having the right kind of diet and the right kind of practice, when really it comes down to a healthy diet and healthy exercise. There are not too many of us that read all the stuff that's been translated into English mm -hmm. that uh, Li Hongxi has said. 
It's interesting to note that the idea of a genocide of Falun Gong members is such a popular conspiracy theory. I say conspiracy theory because although Amnesty International and various other organisations confirm the oppression by the Chinese government of Falun Dafa supporters and practitioners, there is actually no solid evidence for the claims that there was a mass genocide of something between 5,000 and 30,000 individuals. There are various claims made, claims that people were killed, claims that people had their organs harvested. There is evidence that people were put into prison. There is evidence that they were rounded up, but there's no evidence of an actual genocide. So either it's a perfect conspiracy where all the evidence has been covered up, despite international journalists actually going to China, going to the locations, finding no proof, and the Chinese government being very open about it. Or Falun Gong is playing upon this alleged genocide for sympathy, to get people supporting them. And that's why so many of their leaflets, so many of their pamphlets in the Western world focus on the harsh oppression of the Chinese government and organ harvesting, despite showing practically no proof, simply some pictures which may or may not relate to people having their organs harvested, considering pictures of dead Chinese people who've been sewn up after surgery or possibly after an autopsy would basically be very easy to put together and say this is proof. And considering it would be an original picture, say from a morgue over in China or another part of Asia or perhaps even in the Western world, it wouldn't actually be necessarily evidential of their claims. We don't have evidence of mass graves. We don't have evidence of mass cremation or some kind of holocaust in another sense. We just don't have the proof of that. We simply have the claims and some people who seem to support the idea that some people were taken and may have been killed and there may have been some organ harvesting. But the evidence is scanty, suggesting either a perfect conspiracy or perhaps nothing happened at all. And there's just big fat communists just eating food, right? right all starving to death. And they'll say, just take a few out and shoot them. That's the essence of the Red Terror. Teach them that their life is nothing. <laughs> you now live in the heaven. Enjoy it. <laughs> I think it's worth pointing out that communism is authoritarian and it's dangerous. But that doesn't mean that beliefs that oppose it or are opposed by it or even oppressed by it are automatically good. Playing on sympathy is not a good thing. Playing upon the idea that some practitioners or perhaps even a great many practitioners have been rounded up and killed might well have some glimmer of truth to it. But you claim that as being absolute truth, but then you dismiss other things because they don't fit with your belief. You use conspiracy theory logic to try and support the idea that your belief is correct and your claims are correct but when it comes down to people setting themselves on fire, you claim there's a big conspiracy going on, despite no actual evidence of this. There are many claims, many suggestions, including by some well-known YouTubers, but that does not actually mean that the facts are solid. Without solid facts, you cannot make solid claims. And therefore, as a result, a lot of the claims in this video are a question of opinion and subjectivity. There are sources beyond that of the Chinese and Falun Gong. We're not talking about two sides. We're talking about numerous sources on the internet talking about these issues, including anti-cult groups who point out the cult characteristics and indoctrination within Falun Gong, otherwise known as Falun Dafa. It varies according to different organisations, different aspects of the movement, different practices and practitioners. A great many people simply pick up a book or get an e-book and look up the ideas and take on a few practices although many people who take it far more seriously are in fact using indoctrination techniques to make themselves feel the effect of the mystical practices, whether it's energy, whether it's to do with healing the body, but a lot of these claims are not across the board. That's to say in a broad movement of something to the effect of 90 million people around the world, most of them in China, you can have a lot of differences between different types of practitioner. Practitioners in China who stick to traditional medicine are going to be different to practitioners in America who accept modern medical science. So there are going to be differences and there's going to be confusion and people are going to ignore a great many points when it comes down to the inner workings of the organisation, the movement itself and certain individuals such as Master Li. People don't see that there is a cult style to a lot of these practices, a lot of these ideas Although you might be a moderate member, you don't represent 
90 million people around the world who take on these practices as part of their life. But a lot of them don't take it as seriously as some of the most radical cases. So a few thousand people might die as a result of not taking modern medicine in some parts of the world, such as in China. Whereas only a handful of people in the Western and developed world will do the same thing and end up with the same sorts of problems. I think that Falun Gong surely meets the criteria of being a cult by American or world standards. The leader has people, instead of, you know, worshipping God or abstract principles, they worship him. They believe he is the all-powerful person. And they've dropped centuries of religion in China to follow this man. He is a self-appointed person who says, as cult leaders do all around the world, follow me. I know the one way. Follow me. Give up everything. Come with me.